The Kazookian Network presents Riven on Jazz with your host, Howard Robertson and Melvin Massey. Sonny Rollins. You got to improve, man. You got Coltrane and Hornet Coleman and these boys coming up. You better get your stuff together. Mr. Miles Davis. The white people are funny. They, in America, they thought that I just woke up one morning and had the blues and started playing the trumpet. But it don't go like that. You can't explain that to them. Miles was able to make something that was wrong into something that was right. Now they know. Another accident. Riffin on jazz. And welcome back. This is Riffin' on Jazz, your weekly visit with friends. Talking about the music that we love. That classic African-American art form called jazz. Oh, yeah. I'm Melvin Massey. And I'm Howard Robinson. I love the energy, <laughs> baby. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah, oh, you know, got to be able to use that voice sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's that voice you learned early on. Oh, yeah. Working for her, for Purvis Band. There you WXSS, go. WXSS, the Memphis Giant. There you go. Today is a very, very special day. We're talking about world class for jazz, the impact and influence that jazz has had on the world, on the planet. And we're going to start off with uh, a young woman who's blowing a classic, a soul classic by Aretha Franklin. Her name is Polly Gibbons. I don't have to tell you what she's doing. Yeah, you know this track. Check yeah. it out. I don't want nobody. Sitting around me and my man. I don't want no. Doctor Fever, you'll understand. 
doctor Filling me up with all of those pills I got me a man named Dr. Phil Wood And he will take care of my pains and my ills His name is Phil Wood in the morning And taking care of businesses Real business man's game Holly Gibbons. Man, she lays that down. Man, and of course, everybody knows that you must have on your big girl panties <laughs> when you try to do Aretha. Yeah. Am Obviously. I telling the truth? Obviously, because that was the queen. Is the queen. Excuse me. Aretha. And this uh, this young lady comes hails from uh, the UK. Yep. And she is, we wanted to start with her because she is really... The, the ideal for the concept of this show, world class for jazz, because jazz is our originally American and quintessentially African American art form that literally schooled and impacted the rest of the entire world. Exactly. You exactly. know, we, school, we had to teach them um, about jazz. African Americans were the um, creators, innovators, purveyors. Of, of jazz around the world. Yeah. And this is indicative of what she just did. She took a classic um, soul song and gave it a beautiful blues jazz kind of feel. And you feel like that that she felt that in her heart. Farm Girl from England okay, and a musical family. But she felt that. And you could tell that she felt that song when she sang it. And, and when we think about it, James Reese Europe, World War One. Okay. And his ragtime band was actually the 369th, uh, 369th Regiment band. Those cats. They were playing jazz were playing in Europe jazz. in World they War One. They went there to fight. They were a fighting group. Okay. And they were in combat, but when they weren't in combat, they were playing. When in their spare time, their they spare were jamming. Time, they were jamming, and they, taught, they started playing jazz. The people in France <laughs> fell in love with it, and, and jazz was in Europe. Okay, so we're dealing with the, Europe, so we're, we're we're touching our continents, right? Okay, right. We're gonna so all we're going to deal with Europe. Y'all know we've dealt with North America and South America in, in past shows. So where are we going now? Okay, we're going to Japan this time. Okay, because we're going to talk about this young lady who was here in Memphis not too long ago. Okay, we say about that Jim Yarber, uh, uh, Jim. Anyway, they were at the drum shop with uh, Graham Decker and uh, Jeff Hamilton. It's organ player. Okay. Her name is Akiko Suruga. And this lady plays a B3 just like her idol, Jimmy Smith. Her idol is Jimmy Smith. Let's see how close to him she could get. The lady is a tramp. Thank you. 
Now, we are talking about world class for jazz. That is our topic today. And we are talking about jazz on every continent. So, mm. so far, we've, um, we've gotten Europe in. Yeah. And talk a little bit about uh, Akiko. Okay, so Asia, Asia it, is uh, her continent, home oh, continent, because yeah. she's from Osaka, Japan. And so, so, so Dao Watanabe back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. saxophone player men and women mm -hmm. beautiful track cool track everybody loves he made Japan appreciate jazz okay over the years it came on forward to, to people like Akiko Suruga so she started playing when she was a little girl she started playing the B3 and, and and she was in high school she was listening to all the players all the cats Jimmy Smith Charles Earl Jack McDuff Jimmy McGriff but and of she, course, you want to play B3? Yeah, that's who that's you right. listen to. <laughs> when she graduated from school, she was tutored and mentored by Lonnie Smith. Dr. Lonnie Dr. Smith. Dr. Lonnie Smith, excuse me. Wow, that <laughs> and, is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, so now she's here in the States and she plays, she goes back home and this and that, she's working in New York a lot. But, uh, and like I say, she was here in town not too long ago at the drum shop with Jeff Hamilton and Graham Dector. And, I mean, you, you feel for that B3, man. She got the feel for the B3. People have to understand that America has a great deal of um, cachet and, and, and legendary respect all around the world. And most of it comes as a result of music. And I don't exactly. care if you're talking about jazz. I don't care if you're talking about R&B or soul music. It is considered quintessentially American, and they look to us for that. And that's how people around the world get exposed to jazz. Yeah. We had one on the on the Caribbean show that was talking about, he was listening to Dave Brubeck. Who right, was that? right, yeah. right. That was Sergio Mendes. Sergio, that's yes. right. Yes, yes. Somebody brought back a Dave Brubeck album, and um, the rest is history. Yeah. So who we got now? Okay, so here's a cat, man. There's not a whole lot of bio on him online. Okay. But I did get a chance to get an email from him. His name is Sebastian Chamont. Okay. He is a saxophone player. Sounds like a Frenchman. Alto saxophone player. He, he lives and born in Nice, works and lives around Nice, France, in the Riviera. Okay. Okay. That's, his, that's his hangout and everything. He came to New York and recorded the album. But this tune that we're going to play, Tulips Bounce, on his uh, first album, uh, Still Walking. Listen to this cat and see how much like Charlie Parker he sounds. Thank you. 
So sax man, Sebastian Shamont, his own tune, Tulips Bounce. What he is cold. Yeah. <laughs> he is cold. And Charlie Parker uh, is an obvious influence. Obviously. We want to tell you, you are listening to Riffin on Jazz on the Kazookian Network. Make sure you check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn app, Stitch, or your favorite podcast provider. And there's another way that you can get our shows. Just text RIFF, R-I-F-F, to 72000. They make me drink up in here, and they make me tell you <laughs> what they are making me drink. Tonight, it's a conga, a red blend from Chile. I like it. I mean, I, they make me drink with him, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Explain it. Explain yeah, it. Yeah, they make me do that. More riffing on jazz after this. Riffin' is what we do. We're riffing on jazz. We're riffing on jazz. The off-year electorate, the midterm electorates, are older, less diverse, more conservative. You have two electorates fighting for the future of this country. And what I'd say to your viewers and and people listening in is, you know what? you got to stop that older, more, less diverse electorate from funking around with your future. Funking up your airwaves and jamming the good information in your ear. Once again, it's Funky Politics. Funky Politics. Riffin is what we do. We're riffin on jazz. Welcome back to Riffin on Jazz. World class for jazz is our theme today. And uh, we are talking about how jazz has just been disseminated and is pervasive all over the planet. Yeah. The only continent we couldn't find a jazz artist was Antarctica. Antarctica, that's because yeah. it's hard to find anybody <laughs> other than a polar bear in Antarctica. But um, hey, we'll, we'll keep checking. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get back to you if we find somebody. So now we go to our motherland, Africa, the yeah. continent of Africa, and we are going to check out Jonathan Butler. You guys have all heard and um, listened to Jonathan Butler for years. Jonathan Butler, I don't know if you knew his background, but Jonathan Butler grew up in abject poverty in South Africa. Jonathan Butler used to look up at airplanes and just imagine where they might be going and imagine being on one um, one day. He was growing up in the throes of apartheid. apartheid. So was music kind of an escape for you? It was my salvation. It, yeah. it, it set me free from, you know, so many things, even though I was living dangerously and we were living in dangerous times. Apartheid, the struggle, struggles of poverty as well, which is where I came out of. And uh, But having a guitar around the house was a way that I could just sit and play my guitar and escape from where most of the kids around me were playing, you know, stabbing one another or throwing stones or... I, I found a place to hide. Play. And you started at a very young age. Weren't you doing shows and gigs when my you were mother, seven years old? My mom and dad used to be in the community doing variety shows to showcase all of us, you know, because we would sit around the bonfires in and, and, and the wintertime to keep warm because we grew up in this big shack, you know, with no electricity and no running water. So we'd keep warm outside, and everybody sort of had a turn to sing add a harmony. So my mother decided she's going to do a variety show and feature all of us. It was the craziest thing. <laughs> it was the funniest thing because... How many, how many kids were there? I mean, we're 12. And of course, my nieces and nephews, we all lived in the same shack. It was like a little c- compound, you know. We were like a nation on our own, you know, <laughs> in South Africa. But that was a crazy time in South Africa.
great and very, very spiritual Jonathan Butler. Me. <laughs> I, I love, I love um, to hear South African people speak and sing because yeah. it's so rhythmical. They've got rhythm in everything and, and every pore of their bodies. And it's, and it's just beautiful to hear them speak, and it's even more beautiful to hear them sing, particularly with those harmonies. Oh, gosh, oh, yeah. Man. You know, they have a jazz club in, your, in, Joburg, in Johannesburg uh, called Kippies. Mm -hmm. It was the place where the jazz artists congregated. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think Kippies is still open, but uh, Devin Naidu came here to talk about world music and world jazz with us. And uh, how we could how do we appreciate the right. South African music? And <laughs> we told them bring it on, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> it is, uh, and they love, um, Amer and they they love American music, and they particularly love African Americans because there's a there's a very very strong tie and kinship between experiences. The musicians, yeah. The musicians. Well, the musicians do, but the people do between uh, our experience as African Americans here in the States and their experience as South Africans in mm -hmm. during apartheid. You know, with us is the movement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um Jonathan Butler. Um and that brings us to a group from Poland. We're back in Europe, uh, yeah. on the European continent now. And this group, I'm going to say, is named after the way that you have to approach pronouncing their names individually. <laughs> the name of the group is Slow. Yeah. Now, introduce them, Alvin. Who do we have? <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't even try. <laughs> Tomas. Y'all to see these name? names. Christophe, uh, Marcin, Camille. And the last, I mean, it's hard to pronounce these names, but let me tell you. These cats got in touch with me because they heard WUMR online. Okay. And they sent me an email and they said they had music that they thought we might like. And I told them to send it to me and they sent it to me and we fell in love with it. And I come to find out they're the hottest smooth jazz band, uh, hottest jazz, neo jazz group in Poland at the moment, as a matter of fact. Check them out for yourselves. They do a cut called Jock.
just heard the group slow yeah. and uh, it's a Polish group and yeah. I think that's why they're called slow because you have to try to pronounce their names <laughs> that way slowly they, they play smooth and simple that's very smooth and I love the way they layer that track as they were building it up and they added pieces to it as it went along as they went up that's yeah. classic man that's yeah. classic stuff Make sure you check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn app, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast provider. Or you can get all of our past shows by texting RIFF, R-I-F-F, to 72000. That's RIFF, R-I-F-F, to 72000. You're listening to Riffin' on Jazz on the Kazookia Network, and we're going to be right back. Don't you dare go anywhere. In blue. Are you all seeing that as a tie with, with the gang culture in Memphis? I don't think that we can attribute all of that to, yeah. to gang yeah. violence or gang initiation. Best in blue on the Kazookian Network. Kazookia. We're getting funky, y'all. 33% of Americans have a college degree. 43% of Africans in this country have a college degree. These are African immigrants that are coming to this country. They didn't have the sure. opportunity to access, but they came over here in this American dream and created within this framework the opportunity that this country was set up, the ideal it was set on. And now to say that these people, because the di disparaging remark goes further than just told. It's funky politics on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Putting the riff in yo jazz. It's riffing on jazz. Welcome back to Riffin' on Jazz. We are talking about world class for jazz, the impact that the jazz genre has had on the planet all over the world. We have 
continentally, Malvin, touch yes. on Europe. We've touched on Asia. We've mm-hmm. touched on Africa. And now we are going back to Asia with the most unlikely um, cat living anywhere you have ever heard. Valerie, excuse me, Valerie. <laughs> excuse me, Valerie stepping off. Talk about it. All right, well, now from the, 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 the one sheet that they sent with the CD, they started off with less from Russia with love and more from Russia with groove. This is a cat who grooves as if he was from Memphis. But where is he from? He is from? from Siberia. And he lives now, wait, and wait, works wait, wait, in wait, Siberia. Wait, 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 wait. I want y'all to understand something. Siberia is the place where they send prisoners and outcasts and people that they never want to see alive again, (laughs) ever. Siberia is so far removed from every... This cat is playing jazz? Yeah, he went to the Central Music School in Moscow. Uh, state conservatory. Uh huh. He his father moved. Of course, it's state. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is. After Stalin died in fifty three, his father moved down south to a uh, close to the Mongolian border by Lake Baikal, which is the largest freshwater mm-hmm. body of water in the world. And he was he grew up there, right around Lake Baikal, and surrounded by music. And he picked up. He's a multi instrumentalist. Plays the keyboards and other things, but. Uh, he picked up a lot of soul. I cannot imagine where it came from in Siberia, but he picked up lying. a lot of soul. And we're going to hear some of it. This cut is called No Doubt Now. Valeri Stepanov. <laughs>
world-class jazz from Valery Stepanov from his New Beginnings CD. Are you <laughs> sure? Two is no from Siberia. It, it's How hard do to you believe. get that? Do you even get American music in Siberia? I guess so. Oh. <laughs> but uh, you know like you said before that this is an international language and it's in people's hearts it's not music is in your heart it is it and, is true. and and any way you can fold it it c- comes out right tell, tell them about tell them about Alex man Alex Alex Bouillon is and and you guys know Alex Bouillon you know all of his music he travels the states I think he lives in New York he, but he yeah. travels all over uh, the U.S. and has played uh, probably somewhere near you, and you've probably seen him. Um, and we're not so going to play got his a, music, really. But we've right got now. an interview coming up. We've got an interview. Yeah. They're going to talk to him, and he's going to talk about influences that on on his playing. And he's from France he originally. From, yeah. uh, I think it's Nice, but uh, no, France. No, he's from yeah. maybe it's Paris. I don't know, but he's from uh, he is from France. Started playing piano, taking piano when he was six years old. It was a rite of passage in his house. Everybody, his daddy played, everybody had to play piano. But he and his daddy was a singer with the uh, French opera, with the Paris opera. And But he used to do jazz gigs. When people would come, they would hire him and he'd, he'd sing uh, with jazz bands. And um, he considers... He doesn't say it in this interview, but one of his main influences was uh, a guy that he calls Uncle Donald. Uncle Donald. Uncle Donald Bird. Oh. <laughs> so again, the music just per- permeated, and uh, his whole being and existence from the time he was six years old. And he talks about it, and that's going to be followed by a phenomenon. But they call it the, the Wonder Kid. Now, understand Wunder what kid. you're going to be hearing. The keyboards that you're going to be hearing is not going to be Alex Bouillon. Bouillon. There's an Alex, though. Yeah. His name is Joey Alexander. All of this next on Riff. Who were your influences as you were growing up? Oh, really, everybody that had a role in, uh, in creating and developing jazz. So you can go from Scott Joplin all the way up mm-hmm. to... Uh, uh, Herbie Hancock, uh-huh. uh, but my favorite one that that cannot do wrong with me that I always liked forever is Joe Sample. Mm. It's, it's, mm-hmm. I know every every note that he played. Yes. Uh, but other than that, of course, Herbie, Duke Ellington, Wynton Kelly's uh, one of uh, Mars Davis piano players, Bill Evans, of mm-hmm. course, those guys. Yeah. yeah, you've played with a lot of different people, mm-hmm. and you've had a lot of really interesting experiences mm-hmm. in your career so far. What really sticks out in your mind? Is there anything that's? Uh, uh, well, it's the only time that I ever was starstruck is when I, the first time that I performed with Earth, Wind, and Fire as part of their band, having grown up yeah. playing along all these records that I knew by heart, and I kind of had the out-of-body experience the first show I, I said I can't believe I'm playing with them and I was, I was like <laughs> I was like I'm really really playing with Earth and Fire it was, yeah. it was fun and yeah. then when we did a song that I, That's the Way of the World uh-huh. which is my all-time favorite oh, indeed and um, I almost started crying yeah so that's that's one that stands out
inspiring music mm, mm, from mm. an inspirational kid. Now that sounded like somebody from the new greater Triple Rock <laughs> Church of God in Christ. Is that who that was? Uh, Joey. Somebody Alexander. from Detroit. That, that's got to be who, who who just got through playing. So that. you know, like we were talking, this kid was born. This guy was born June the twenty fifth, two thousand three. Next, by the time you hear this, he will be a fresh fifteen years old. <laughs> taught himself, Joey Alexander taught himself how to play the piano when he was six years old. From the time he was six years old, and tell him what he what he was playing and what he was playing on. He was playing. Thelonious Monk, well, you need it, on a miniature electric piano that his daddy had bought. And his daddy didn't realize that he could play Thelonious Monk. So his daddy started hearing Monk on this little miniature keyboard. Wonder, Wonder what he thought in his house, <laughs> in another part of his and, house. And Joey was like four or five years old. He had like no that. idea he yeah. could play like that. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That is called, this young man is a jazz savant. A savant uh, is a, a a a learned person and whatnot, a, a sage. So he is a jazz savant because he has jazz skills far beyond his his years. Oh uh, yeah, and and again, Nick, we come to this thing about this is the world that, that we're he didn't about. train for. This is the world that we're talking about, and this jazz music has permeated the hearts of all these people everywhere, and it sounds the same. You know what I mean? It's yes. the skill of the yes. artist yes. that makes the jazz sound the same with all of them. So continentally, we have been on this show to Europe, Asia, and uh, where else? Europe, Asia, Africa. Africa, and now we've got one more coming up. Yeah, we're gonna the continent of Australia. Going down under. Down under with James Morrison. Y'all listen to this and understand that he is playing every instrument you hear. Except drums and bass. I except, believe okay, Jeff Hamilton. All is the on horns. There. All the horns, the saxes, the trombones, the trumpets, the piano. He's doing all of it. He is his own big band. You go, you hear it right here on World Class for Jazz, on Riffin' on Jazz, on the Kazookian Network. It's been our pleasure to be with you again. Please be back with us next week. We'll be back same place, same time on Riffin' did Malvin. We, yeah, but did we say mm-hmm. it's James Morrison? Yeah, we said we that. We did that. Oh, okay, We didn't yeah. say all of me. All of me, yeah. <laughs> it's from Snappy, too. <laughs> How are you blast, man? I love it. Riffin on Jazz. Executive produced by Kazukian. Co-host by Howard Robertson and Malvin Massey Jr. Music curation by Howard and Malvin. And recorded at Kazukian Studios. Riffin on Jazz. Part of the Kazukian Network. Ah!